Let me start by saying no other studio really captures the level of excitement I get when a movie is announced quite like Pixar. DreamWorks had some great films over the years like How to Train Your Dragon, but Pixar is always willing to go a bit further, push the boundaries of storytelling, and give us truly unique experiences and very little cash grabs. Well, sometimes there are. We'll talk about those as well. This is the best and worst of Pixar on Movie Feuds. Let's start with the worst. Full disclosure, cards on the table, or cars on the table if you will, I didn't even finish this movie. Everything about it screamed executive decision, especially the genre switch from coming of age tale to generic spy flick. Skadoosh? More like skadon't. That work? This has undoubtedly aged the worst in the animation department. Yes, I know Toy Story 1 is older, but they're plastic toys, so you don't expect that level of detail you think you'd have with bugs with the fur and the pincers and the, the legs. Is it pincers? Pinchers? Pin it's pincers. I'm, I'm fairly confident. I'm 70%. A Bug's Life's not a bad movie, but it's really nothing special either. It's a pretty generic journey of a clumsy inventor finding his footing amongst his peers. The highlight comes from the villain Hopper, voiced by Kevin Spacey. Although on that note, it's hard to find a movie Kevin Spacey's in where he's not the highlight. I'm not into racing, and I'm even less into Larry the Cable Guy and his shenanigans. I know kids love this movie, and there are plenty of adults that really dig this and its Route 66 setting. For a movie using marketing phrases like go fast, this thing moves at a snail's pace. Unless you're the snail from Turbo, named Turbo, in which case it's moving really fast. This is getting very confusing, it's, it's just, it's a slow film. You guys with me so far? You feeling this list? You know what I'm not feeling? Brave. The fiery redhead Miranda was pleasant enough to watch, but the story didn't interest me. Perhaps it's because I find the existence of bagpipes unpleasant, or maybe it was the poor tone and pacing. Either way, disappointed on all fronts with Brave. It looked nice, but not much under the hood. Should've used that for cars. Mike and Sully are back in the prequel nobody asked for. Is it good? Yeah, I quite enjoyed it. I still don't think there was any need for this to exist, but it's a fun, action-packed college romp that plays off a lot of adult themes while maintaining the charm of a good old-fashioned animated flick. <laughs> Toy Story 3 is just as magical as the previous installments, bringing back all our favorite toys and giving a few of the less savory characters the boot. <coughs> Bo peep! <clears throat> Sorry, I had something disgusting in my throat. Lotso was a great addition as the villain, and the new toys were a lot of fun, especially Michael Keaton as Ken. That daycare destruction segment is one of my favorite in the entire franchise. I'm willing to say this is the messiest of the Pixar movies with a tonal shift that's just all over the place, with parts of sheer brilliance, and other parts where you're just sitting there thinking, what, really? What, dogs fighting on planes, holding squishy bones to fly? Dog fighting. We're really going to the pun route now. It just seems like there was a struggle in the writer's room to decide which route to go. The introduction is one of the saddest pieces of storytelling I've ever seen in an animated picture. Going from that to a scary looking dog with a voice box making him sound like a little kitty, it's just, it's just bizarre. Thankfully the majority of this works and it ends up being an extremely enjoyable adventure for our ragtag heroes. It's a touching story of letting go, moving on to that next chapter in life. One that's chock full of creativity love, sadness, spirit. Squirrel! Another great new story from Pixar. It's refreshing to see them take a break from the sequel churning to go back and do what they do best, making unique and inspiring content that both young and old can appreciate. I didn't leave the theater yelling, this is the greatest movie I've ever seen, like most critics apparently did, but I appreciate it just the same. Well written, well acted, and full of, well, joy. Literally. This is the hidden gem of the list, one that I almost moved up higher even. It's a criminally overlooked movie about a rat carrying out his dream of being a world-renowned chef. Yes, maybe it's a bit of a cliche to have an animal character doing something that's normally uncommon, but it's done so well, I just can't help but smile whenever I think about it. It's a well-oiled machine from start to finish. Once again, should've used that in cars somehow. It's a lot of car things I could've said. 
Monsters, Inc. is the definition of a Pixar movie. It has charm oozing out of each and every door. There's the great dynamic between our three leads, Mike, Sully, and Boo. I'd put this higher even, but the door scene plays out a bit too long for my liking. It still has my favorite ending of all these pictures. One word's uttered. One simple word we've heard over and over again in the movie, but since some time has passed and he hasn't seen her in such a long time, it reduces me to a puddle every time that phrase is uttered. Giddy. <laughs> Giddy. <laughs> That's the sound of a surprised owl. It's also the sound I make whenever Pixar blindsides me with the depressing intro. Finding Nemo might be the king of that with the slaughtering of the wife and babies. After that though, it's mostly all laughs. Ellen DeGeneres provides great commentary as the forgetful fish Dory. With tons of exotic underwater locations and sea life to behold, this drops nicely in the top five. The one that started it all. I'd be lying if I said this hasn't aged a day, because it has technically. Story-wise, it remains just as charming as ever. How many times have I said charming on this episode? Probably not enough. This was a revolutionary achievement when it hit the big screen and it deserves a spot high up on the list. Woody, Buzz, Slink, Rex, Mr. Potato Head, and many more have won a place in the hearts of millions. You know what, Toy Story? You've got a friend in me. You got a friend in me? Many thought that nothing could achieve the greatness that Toy Story 1 was, and some will argue 3 is even better than 2. I'm not gonna do that now, I've already crossed that bridge in a previous feud. To me, Toy Story 2 carries on perfectly from the first and bringing in cool new characters. That's, I'm, that's all I'm going to say because it feels like this list is just going on for an eternity. So we're going to move on. A post-apocalyptic love story where most of the tale is told through beeps and blips. An unconventional kids movie that foreshadows a very different future where the robots are more human than humans themselves. Being strapped to machines all day, living their days on their backs, eating and socializing through non-emotional means. The robots have personalities, emotions, goals, while the people are blubbering characters of their ancestors. One robot, hell-bent on finding his star-crossed lover, inadvertently saves the human race from themselves. That's Wally. This is his story. And it's an emotional one. It's a beautiful one. And it's one that I can watch time and time again. Unless you're a kid. Then it's a story of a couple robots making stupid sound effects. Either way, win-win. Everything just works. From the superhero documentary style intro to the villain foreshadowing. The cast is fantastic and the social commentary is spot on. This is a movie about a family coming together to beat the odds. It's a cool superhero movie complete with ice slides, water running, parachute deploying, cape killing mayhem. It's a spy flick containing stealth segments, espionage, intrigue. All of these different themes play off each other in a brilliant way and as I stated before, Everything just works. It's funny. It's sharply written. It's action-packed. It's incredible. Yeah, I know it's an overused statement about the movie, but damn it, the title knows it. <laughs> Pixar has given us all some great memories, and they don't appear to be slowing down. Sure, there may be some bumps in the road. Why didn't I use any of these comments for cars? The puns all line up. Anyway, there's no doubt in my mind that they're going to continue to make great content. Inside Out has proven that. The Good Dinosaur and Finding Dory are on their way, and I expect great things from both those movies. I hope you enjoyed my list. There are 15 of them, so there's plenty of room for debate. Give me yours in the comments. Like the video, please. Subscribe, and check me out on Patreon if you'd like. Um, this, I do this alone, as some of you know, so a little, a little extra income would help. Anyway, this is more than just reviews. This is Movie Feuds, and I have heard that Incredibles 2 is finally in production, or they're writing it, or something's happening. Either way, as long as Brad Bird's uh, at the helm, I'm all in. After all, I am his biggest fan.